this summer, the market was flooded with IPOs. At one point in June, we were averaging more than one deal a day. Now, many of these newly minted public companies are not so hot, to be very diplomatic. When you dig deeper, you might find that there's some undervalued gold buried with all the draws. I want you to consider Fogo de Chao. That's Fogo, F-O-G-O, the small cap Brazilian steakhouse chain, unique concept. Gaucho chefs continuously rotate through the restaurant, bringing you new cuts of meat. Fogo came public at 20 bucks a share mid-June, rocketed up to $25.75 on its first day of trading, and then peaked the very next day. Since then, the stock's been slammed. It's falling about 30% from its highs. But down here with the stock under 20 bucks and below where it came public, I think this could be an intriguing story. Now, part of the reason Fogo's been punished is that while they have 37 restaurants, only 26 are in the U.S., one JV in Mexico City, and remaining 10 in Brazil. And anything with Brazil exposure has been annihilated of late, thanks to the incredibly weak Brazilian real. However, the story is really about U.S. Brazil only makes up 15% of their revenues this year. The company believes they can add another 100-plus locations in the U.S., which makes Fogo, means it has a major runway for growth as it continues to expand. Plus, when Fogo reported its first quarter as a public company a month ago, it beat on both the top and bottom lines. I think this is a stock that's been overly penalized for its exposure to Brazil, not given enough credit for its expansion potential in the U.S. People don't understand the story, and it's got the rest of the world ahead of it. I I recognize it's a steakhouse chain, and some of them had tough times, but let's find out. Let's take a closer look with Larry Johnson. He's the CEO of Fogo de Chao. We'll learn more about his company and its prospects. Mr. Johnson, welcome to May of Money. Thanks, Jim. Pleasure to be here. All right, Larry, this is, uh, I when I studied the company, what I realized is that it's not a steakhouse. It's an experience that serves steaks. Fair? Right on the money. And in fact, it's, it's, it's even more exciting than that, because what we're offering is an opportunity to be adventuresome in a safe environment. Why is that? It's, it's things that are familiar. It's great steak. It's great fruit, uh, great vegetables, great salad, uh, great wine selection, great caipirinhas. So the, the people that go to Fogo, they're in for a treat. And you know, we, we have the, the opportunity. Look, we, we've defined this category. Mm-hmm. We lead it. But the beautiful thing is, Somebody wants to have Chuhasco go to a Brazilian steakhouse, we're at the top of the list. But you know what? When somebody goes to a steakhouse, what happens? They consider Fogo. And, And, you know, remember, when you're at Fogo, it's a dining experience. What happens? You've got the opportunity not just to have that filet, not just to have a ribeye. You've got the full experience of... Maybe one night it, it's lamb chops and ribeye. Maybe another night it's picanha and, and, and filet. You're in charge. You're customizing it. Okay. Now, we know that beef has been expensive. We know that labor costs are going higher. Yours, though, do not, your inputs don't seem to be hurting your bottom line. Uh, correct. And, and it's a real advantage of our operating system. On the labor side, you know, our labor costs are about 20 percent, which is unheard of. Yeah, in, I know. In, I was shocked to see that it was well, slow. Where, where it starts are gaucho chefs. Each of our restaurants have got 12 to 15 gaucho chefs. Our, our total staffing in our restaurants about 70. The gaucho chefs are the ones that they do the butchering. Right. They, they grill. They're your chef. They serve you at table side. They carve your meat. So, so right there, you've, you've knocked out a, a couple layers of labor. That's a great point. And, and see, this isn't something, you know, I'd like to say we were geniuses and we came up with it. It's inherent to the system. Same thing on the food side. Look, we're not tied into a tight spec on, on, on filet or ribeye. We've got the opportunity, again, since we, we butcher in-house, mm-hmm. uh, we've got the opportunity to offer our guests 20 cuts, and what is it? It's beef, it's lamb, it's pork, it's chicken. We have a fish entree. So we, we, we don't have those tight specs that box us in on meat costs. Now, you're still early in your growth, but you've been around and been profitable. It's not like you suddenly just appeared. Jim, Fogo started in Brazil 35 years ago, came to the U.S. in 96. Quickly, at the time, the company had three stores in Sao Paulo, came to the U.S., Today we're at 26 stores. Uh, we've got five under construction. Uh, we know that there's an incredible opportunity in the U.S. We can do another 100 plus stores. And, and think about it: AUVs, eight million dollars. Average unit five. Uh, the uh, uh, the margin at the restaurant level, 32 percent. Yeah, extraordinary. Uh, cash on cash return in excess of 50 percent on our stores. You know, an average Fogo, we run through our store. 137,000 guests a year. 
Yeah, this is incredible. Well, anyway, look. Do, this do the math. Oh, no, I know. I mean, because I see where you guys come out, and I know, you know, we follow a lot of restaurants. You're just above almost everybody we follow, and yet the stock is too low. It feels like Ruth Chris before the big move. I want to thank Larry Johnson, CEO of Fogo de Chao. I think it's an easier story once you've been to what? F-O-G-O, and it's been overlooked because so many IPOs came at the same time. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get to jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.